Well, isn't this fucking special? We're gonna start this video off on the modifications on the body. So, three main modifications that I'm gonna have to do for this is one is we're gonna have to fill fill in the mountain holes for the bridge because the bridge I have here is a shower. See which one it exactly is. I can't tell you right now, but it's a shower. Oh. STM, whatever the f that is. Reverse. By the way, quick little note on why it says reverse for this thing. By the way, it's an under roller bridge. I prefer the roller bridges, just more comfortable to play with and easier on the strings. Um, there's reverse and non-reverse. What that is, is typically, you know, your bridges here, your intonation screws are actually on the inside. Uh, some people prefer to have them on the outside, like you would with a Floyd Rose. So if you want your intonation screws on the back of the guitar, make sure you get non-reverse. This is reverse, so it's kind of like normal as the rest of it. So let that be in mind if you order something like this. The other thing is why we're gonna have to mod this out is these mountain peg setup is a lot thinner than the hole. So now there is an adapter that you can use for the, that that fits this open in, but for this thin of a post. And the thing is, I don't want that. It's just an and and I think they were kind of pricey. I forgot how much they cost for a dumb little thing like that. And you really gotta make sure you get the right one. And I don't really know for sure if I would be getting the right one. So, and I mean, kind of like wanted to make this thing, you know, look like it was meant to be for this bridge and not really like, oh, it was uh, uh, just, a, just a way to modify it, even though it's gonna get modified. But anyways, so as far as doing what this is, I'm gonna put a couple wood dowels in it and just redrill it out for the shallow bridge. Then the next thing that has to be done is to put in a kill switch. It's an LED kill switch. And it's gonna go right here. And what most people do when they put in a kill switch is simple. You know, you, you just drill a hole, put it in, you wire it up. But I wanna also make that look like this guitar was meant to have that kill switch. Now, of course, where you have the toggle switch and your knobs, there is this bevel that was, you know, done. And I want to make it look like that switch was meant to be here. So I'm going to have to recreate one of these. But I'm going to put it in between the volume and the tone. Because when I play, I want to be able to go do, 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 in a comfortable position. Not too far, not too far away. Just do, 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 do. So that's where I'm going to put that. And the third addition, which I already kind of started planning on doing, is for the battery box. Which we'll be doing first, which is basically one of these. It's simple process. I believe I showed it on my last two guitar builds. Um, just gonna go quick and depth. You know, kind of determine where you want to put it. You kind of want to have it close somewhere near your cavities for your wiring and your um, your guitar jack open in. Because for one, if you're going, if you're using one of these, you're probably having some type of powered pickup, um, like an EMG or um, of course like the one I'm putting here, a Fishman Fluence. Um, and of course, if you're getting a kill switch with a lighted LED like I am, it requires power. So what you gotta do is you gotta end up having the negative wire go into the jack, and yet the positive wire has to go into the cavity with your, all your other stuff. So you wanna make sure you kinda have it close so you're not running into weird positions. 
I remember I had to do something diff different with the Jackson V only because there's not much space on the fins where I had to put it up here and had to do just some extra wiring length and rerouting. But this one's going to be easier. Um, so when you decide where you're going to want to put it, you know, put some tape down on it so you can actually mark out your stuff. And it also helps with, because um, you'll be routering it out. So it kind of helps with chipping and kind of making it cleaner. And if you're not going to be doing the finish on it, I would suggest putting even a lot more tape on it because that will protect, you know, wear from when you're rubbing the when you're putting the router on it. Its plate is not scratching up your guitar body as much. So basically, measure out your inner box. I actually measured out both the out the outer so I can see where it was going to actually land. So I so I have a better rep like visual so that way I don't have the lip of this hanging over or too far out. Um, but basically get your exact measurement, length and width, you know, figure it out between, you know, the lips of the back of the battery box and just mark it out. And also make sure you mark out your depth too from the bottom of the plate to the bottom of the box because that's how deep you want to go. Give yourself like maybe a sixteenth of an inch or a few millimeters in length so that way you know uh, it doesn't like because sometimes you can come up a little bit short and you're trying to press this down and and this is not going all the way and you're going to just have to and you're going to be fighting it a little bit and when you do it just kind of test fit and make sure it's all right you know um like i can already see here i might have an issue with I don't know if you can see it, these two lips on the top of it. I may have to hog out just a hair more just to make sure that fits. And also, like I said, you know, plan your wiring, which is good because right here, my jacks right here, my my ent my entry hole right for the the jack is also right here, so it's just gonna go this way. So and plus the, the hole is like already lined up perfectly because my jack is right here straight on and it's been drilled straight on this way so it'll actually it should land pretty perfect anyways now that is covered so now it's time to actually start hogging this thing out hogging this bitch out so i'm going to get my router set up i'm going to get uh my drill set up because you have to put in four holes in the corners and we're going to start carving some shit out I got all my stuff ready to go to drill out the battery box. So, first things first. It's good to do all four corners with a drill bit. I have a piece of tape marked off for how far I could only go down to want to go too far or too shallow. It's set for one inch, but I only really need seven eighths. But like I said, I'm giving myself a little bit of extra more room in there. And just to double check, just I lined it up like this. So I can see how much. So, and also I have my router also set for the right depth. And make sure you pay attention because I did extra lines for this on which areas you need to hog out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start it. Good thing about the tape here, you know you're there because it will push the, the shavings out of the way. Once it starts pushing the shavings out of the way, you know you're there. corners now just to make sure my router bit 
That's good, that's good. Good, good, good. And, just make sure I bring it right to the body. Just let it fall naturally. All right, time to start hogging. You know, I forgot that when it comes to routing, you can't go full blown yet. You have to kind of work it. See how far to go. Okay, we got more to go. Carved out my line. One line, then the next line. Just trying to get a better visual for what I'm, what I'm cutting here. Now the only way to really make this look even super better if you had a jig to bump up against, but I don't, so I'm freehanding. Now, try to see and go down a little bit more. Right? 
too deep. So, back it up a bit. Right there. More chunks. And now we should be able to go all the way through. that come off wait that in a sec <sighs> now just a little bit of a clean where did this come from though oh not even necessary but okay Now I'm just gonna clean up the sides a little bit, even it up. That's a cavity. Clean this up and we'll check it out. All right. We got it routed. And it fits. Only thing really left to do is to put a hole in there, which I could just go ahead and do it right now. I could even use this same bit. And it has to 
go upsy daisy, sort of. There it is. Okay. So that's taken care of. Now, simple one, just plugging those up. Just going to use a couple dowels and some wood glue. That simple. Just gonna get some is on the bottom, some is on the bottom, and just coat the dowel. Put the little mother screw in there. Do a little tap. Up. And you can actually cut that off. And a little saw here. Now again, if you're not seeing with the finish later, I suggest taping all this stuff up. Brought my non-flip pad over here, but it's okay. The reason why I'm also taping up, not taping up, cutting it, I can reuse this guy. Because it's enough left over. Save me a dowel for like, I don't know, some type of butt plug, I guess. Yeah. Supposed to coat this thing. Right. Put her in there. Put down. Yeah, so that's taken care of. This is actually some really good stuff. I suggest using it for anything wood glue re related. Um, so as far as when I get closer to this, um, I will end up going through my collections of stains and seeing what closely matches this, even though you're really not gonna see much of this anyways, because after when you put the post on there, you, you would, it would be really hard to see, but I'm still going to end up trying to match color-wise best I can. And of course, you know, all this is going to get sanded, so it'll get perfectly flush. And of course, we'll tackle on redoing the holes precisely where they have to go based on what this was when we get to the bridge installation. But for now, don't have to worry about that. So the next thing, next mod, is we got to deal with this. So I want to get set up for that, and I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to do that. Okay. So the way I'm going to go about recreating these beveled openings for the kill switch is first, I need to determine the location where I want to put the little f***er. So, I've already got taped up the area that I'm going to be drilling in. And the little X marks the spot in there somewhere is where I'm going to put my first hole. Always kind of start with a starter hole, a small one. So... Pull up this one. Oh, by the way, speaking of that, let me backtrack a sec from the last segment. Um, before I, when I cut the camera off, I realized something. There's one thing actually I needed to do for 
the bridge was to actually kind of put starter holes on where the bridge is going to go. So what I did was, is just to double check, I went online to Schaller and they have like the exact dimensions of the product and where the pole spacing is. So I just matched it up here. I bought the center up here perfectly and then just put a couple little smart starter holes. So when I backtrack, I'll actually drill out the right diameter because with all the other paintwork and stuff, it might get lost in the shuffle. So it'd be easier to take care of that now. Well, anyways, back to this little customer creation. So I'm gonna put in a small drill bit. And this I'm gonna go all the way through because I need it to go into the cavity as well. All right. Now the next one I'm gonna do is a spade bit. Let me get this off. A spade bit like this. Now this is old whatever, but you know, it's, this has seen better days. Now if I were to just go ahead and do the exact diameter for the switch itself, and then I try to put this in here, it won't has nothing to get centered up to, and it'll just wobble all the way around. So, because of that starter hole, it'll kind of grab here. But the thing I have to be careful of is that I need to be level as possible. Now I could have done it on my drill press, but I'm gonna do it this way just because not everybody has one. And whenever working with spade bits, low speed. Because high speed, for some reason, it just, gra it just wants to grab. So, now most drill bit drills have a little bubble like a like a crosshair thing so you're lined up so here I go. I'm gonna hold my hold the guitar bit. Now it's gonna chip a little. And that's pretty much all I want. I kinda clean it up, I go backtracking a little bit. Now I'm going to end up having to clean this up anyways, so that's not a big deal. So. Now, I'll do the hole that I needed for the switch. Now my, now, this is, my switch opening is just a hair uh, under half an inch. So I'm going like, I don't know, what was it? I can't remember, but this is just under a hair of half an inch. And the good thing is that hole is still small. This is, is still, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll line up. <laughs> okay. Now we kind of got a rough opening. So now it kind of looks like that. It's still very rough, very sharp. So what I think I'm going to do is, I'm going to go get my Dremel with a, with a little sander head and just kind of clean this up. So I'm going to get set up for that. So I got a Dremel set up. What I have on here is like one of the stone looking heads because uh, the sanding ones don't have a flat surface right here. So I'm just going to kind of use that just to clean the face of it off. And then we'll kind of deal with the edge itself. Uh, one thing to know when working with a Dremel with something like this and an opening like this, the thing is going to want to kick and probably hit you in the f***ing face. So, just be mindful of that, you know, and just be steady as you can. That actually worked pretty well. Now I'm gonna change the head to one of the sanding heads that actually has like a little bit of sandpaper in it. And this is to smooth out the bevel. So 
I want to do this this way so I can see a little bit better. There, I got it a little bevel in it now. Now the rest of it is just gonna be some hand sanding. So let me just get some paper. So what I've got here is basically a piece of 80 grit. And that's really just to help still cleaning it up, getting rid of some of the burrs, mostly on the shaping part of it. I don't need huge chunk of paper. It just needs something just to get in here with. We're good. So it's literally just doing this. Now a piece of 400, kind of do the same thing. So I want to flatten a little bit right here at the bottom because the rest of them are that way as well. Use the 80 to kind of do that. Okay, let's go back to this. Oh yeah. So I got a beveled hole in there. Let me go grab that switch and see how it looks in there with it. It's a little bit of a tight fit. So here's what I'm gonna do. Grab the drill and just Clean it up a little. Perfect. Perfect fit. And it fits good coming out of here too, so. Pull it, pull it back out. Probably get even a little bit tighter too because after it gets painted, it'll build up a little bit on that. So that's all right. I'd rather have it like that than too loose. So that's basically the mods on the, on the body now. Okay, 
I think we're going to wrap up the video on this right here. This is basically just body mods, whatever. Um, so on the next video, I know this was a short one for what I've been posting lately. So the next video, we're going to be tackling on prepping and painting both the body and it's over here. Yeah, come here. And this and cleaning this up back here and also prepping this to put the fingerboard back on because the new truss rod came in. So yes, we'll be dealing with that coming up soon. But gonna end the video right here. And that's it. Go build a guitar yourself. <laughs>